let me give you three results you get from pressing for encounters there are three results that you get from pressing for encounters when a man decides to press for encounters and now I want you to be very sensitive I sense that while I'm mentioning this there will be impartations there are people who have come here with their hearts open some of you are in ministry you may be in you may be outside maybe in Zaria following across the globe please I'd like you to be sensitive for this next few minutes that we have because I believe that there is a hearing of faith as you are hearing there are activations happening within your spirit man to empower you to be a believer that returns with results you believe that say amen, amen. result number one the first result that you experience when you begin to press for encounters by the word and then visionary encounters is an impartation of the spirit of faith an impartation of the spirit of faith please write an impartation of the spirit of faith what does that mean the confidence to live out your destiny the confidence to live out the purposes of God in your life the confidence to dare life without fear is a product of genuine encounters just write for reference we may not read it but write for reference Daniel chapter 3 from 15 down to 30 it documents the story of three hebrew boys shadrach meshach and abednego you know the story and the burning uh, furnace experience these gentlemen had such an encounter that built confidence within them even though they were in a strange land and they told the king they said oh king we will not bow we will not bow we love you we respect you we've been taught to respect authority but we will not bow to you. Our God, they said, is able to deliver us and he will. But they said, even if he does not deliver us, just know it for a certainty that we will not bow to you. Now the king is angry and he says, really? This is what you are telling me? My people, come and make the fire seven times hotter. The Bible says Nebuchadnezzar was angry. They made the fire seven times hotter to the point that those who threw them in were burned to death by that fire. And as soon as they arrived there, confidence, the Bible says they became four immediately. The Lord is nigh them that call upon him. Four of them, their conviction had produced result. And that they saw, were there not three men who were thrown in? Two miracles happened there or three number one the Bible says these were men that the fire had no power over there was no smell of smoke or burning just like the burning bush number two the second thing that happened was their chains and everything was loosed immediately they were walking freely in the furnace and number three they saw one who looked like the son of God Nebuchadnezzar said he answered and said the form of the fourth is like the son of God encounters encounters let me show you one last scripture Acts chapter 4 from verse 29 to 31 and now oh Lord remember this when they healed the man at get beautiful and they threatened them to not preach in that name again the Bible says they returned to their company and they began to pray this was the content of the prayer and now Lord behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servant that with all boldness they may speak your word 30 by stretching forth your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of your holy child next verse please the bible says and when they had prayed hallelujah the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were filled with the holy ghost and they spake the word of god with boldness they did business with boldness they did ministry with boldness they confronted ancestral powers and all kinds of yokes with boldness it takes more than reading a book to be bold courage and boldness is not about shouting it's about being firm in your conviction even in the midst of negating circumstances and oppositions I know whom I have believed 
and I am persuaded, he said, that he is able to commit, to keep that which is committed to him against that day. These guys had encounters with God and even at the point of martyrdom, they would not deny Jesus. Bible history tells us how many of them were killed, inverted, put in a transverse session, and all of them died with joy. Many of them smiling. The hymn writers, the hymns that we sing today, many of those hymn writers died on account of their faith. They were given a chance. It's in your Bible. They said there were others who refused to receive their dead back to life just to prove their conviction about God. The Bible joined all of them and called them people of faith. In fact, it calls them elders. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen, the days that are before us will demand people not just of godliness, not just of character, but people of courage. What happens to you when you are threatened, when your life is threatened on account of the gospel? What happens to you when you are threatened to say you must give bribe in the office, otherwise they are going to fire you? Do you have an encounter that tells you, I'd rather lose my job? like the three Hebrew boys. I hope you know at the back end of every miracle is on bending trust. Number two. What is the second result that comes with pressing for encounters? Supernatural empowerment to demonstrate the might and the power of God to your world supernatural empowerment to demonstrate the might and the power of God to your world. I like this. Supernatural empowerment to demonstrate the might and the power of God to your world. I believe in the supernatural. John 4, 48. Jesus was speaking and he said, Except ye see signs and wonders, he said, ye will not believe. A popular scripture here, Romans 15 and verse 19. Romans 15 and verse 19. 15, 19. Through mighty signs and wonders, and by the power of the Spirit of God, he says, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel. The gospel is not fully preached until the power dimension is captured in the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, he says, for it is the power of God unto salvation. He says the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God, he says again, is not in word, but in power, the demonstration of power. Encounters bring to the life of the believer supernatural empowerment to demonstrate the might and the power of God to our world. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, having encountered Jesus for a period of three and a half years, he left them with a promise. He says, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, we need power. Settle it once and for all. Power is not for preachers. Power is not for apostles and prophets. Power is for believers. He said, tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power. I have taught you here. It takes power to excel in business. It takes power to be wealthy and remain wealthy for the kingdom. He says there is something called the power to prosper. It takes power to stand upon the truth of God's word. Warding off all the yokes of darkness that daily continue to scheme themselves to bring you down. I hope you know that there are forces mandated by hell at every given point in your life and your Christian experience, you are a project in the kingdom of darkness. Let me repeat it if you do not hear. Let me tell you the truth. The Bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness. For as long as you are alive and you are vowed with your life to serve the purposes of the kingdom, there are demons and spirits assigned to you. Their assignment is to bring you down and to make sure that the counsel of the Lord does not stand in your life, in your ministry. You will be joking to believe that there are no spirits assigned against Koinonia or against Joshua Selman. But thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph mama you need power 
so that the devil does not make a shipwreck out of your children man of God you need power without power listen to me things will go down in your life and you will be surprised businessman you need power you can buy and sell and make financial decisions but hear me there are spirits the king of Tyre will manipulate the economy to make you lose so that you cannot sponsor the church it takes power can I tell you the way demons plague our world today it it used to be people did not pray respectfully speaking it was not a prayer point for a woman to get pregnant and give birth to a child but now it has people get married and the next project is prayer for the next one month because you are not even sure you just watch and see no it takes power it takes power that as a woman you lay your hands and say I will not only give birth my womb will not produce an arm robber my womb will not produce a devil it will not produce a demon kings will come out of my loins is someone learning supernatural empowerment you need power to live in today's world encounters bring power one day you get up you just touch a part of your body and you see some swelling coming you would think it's just a little boil then it begins to grow then it begins to grow in two weeks it has grown to be twice the size of your tie and they tell you ah, 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 ah. you have 10 more days to live in the name of Jesus I declare over anyone here if there is any stranger roaming around your body and around your life everything that has not been planted by my father by the power of the Holy Ghost I take it out of your body now I take it out of your business now out of your ministry now listen the Bible says while men slept farmers came to sow they sowed wheat they sowed good business they came and they sowed a great evangelical ministry but while men slept while men slept you are not the only one holding seeds there are spirits holding seeds to come and plant seeds of discord in your church your organization if you keep quiet and you are bankrupt of power you will keep watching your life go down hallelujah you see business partners who have been in business and alliance for many years just when good things are about to happen here comes this wicked sower called the devil he will sow a seed push this one out and that's the end of the business Lipsin, let me tell you the truth i know what i'm saying you know without power you will not survive the days that are before us favor wants to come to you the devil will manipulate a man to say you see that lady please do not bless her i don't i have a problem with her mother what is the lady's business with your trouble with the mother every wrong ears that listen every everyone who wants to speak wrongly to your destiny help us so that they will not help you i call upon my god to silence them now Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The wife of Herod, when they were preparing to crucify Jesus, the wife of Herod went to sleep and she had a dream. She got up and called her husband. She said, see, take your hands away from this man. I have seen in a dream that he's innocent. Even though in this case, Jesus allowed himself because it was the hidden wisdom of God so that you will be crucified and in his death you will bring many sons to glory. But the woman, because of her heart, she called her husband and said, don't fight this man. Don't fight this man. The power of God can rest upon you and grant you wisdom. Power does not just mean signs and wonders alone. Power translates to wisdom. Sometimes you want to speak and the restraining power, keep quiet. That silence is what can make you a CEO because they are waiting for who does not have emotional intelligence to speak. And you want to speak, but the Holy Ghost restrains you. And you keep quiet and they say the one who is silent, please assume the office tomorrow. Do you not know it takes power to keep quiet? In this noisy world there are people who will pay people millions of naira to walk close to them if they understand their ability to keep quiet hmm. 
We are wrapping up. Oh, listen to me because something is about to land upon your life. You didn't come here tonight to waste your time. Are we together now? Yes. The Bible says when a man faints in life, what God gives him is not encouragement. He giveth power to the faint. That means if you are fainting, what you lack is power. Is that true? That if you turn aside in the day of battle, how many of you have seen, listen, to the military with all due respect, when army runs away in battle, there is a name they call it and there are, there are punishments that are met because they violate their oath to be able to defend the nation. That sometimes even at the face of death, these people stand and valiantly fight. The believer was never designed to run away. He said, haven't done all to stand. Stand. It takes power to stand. Even if you have to stand alone. You are in a family of 30 people. Everybody is an unbeliever. And prophecy has come that is a new season. But who is that one man? If the men are not serious, God will raise one woman like Deborah. And now you are going to stand. You will stand the standing of men and the standing of women at the same time. Haven't done all to stand. It takes power to stand and speak and declare and pray and fast and push until prophecy comes to pass. Many of you have come here for service tonight, genuinely lacking power. You are exhausted in your spirit work. It's half of the year already. And some of you, you've gassed out in business, in life. Welcome to the house where you are refilled. When there was no more oil, the lamp stopped burning. The lamp did not spoil. It only stopped because there was no oil. For some of you, your lamp is still there. Your ideas are still there. Your ministry is still there. Your business is still there. The only problem is that the oil has finished. I come by the grace of God as a privileged them that sell. Let there be oil in your lamp. Let there be oil in your lamp. Let there be oil in your lamp. Fresh oil upon your head. Fresh oil upon your lamp. Let it burn like never before. There's a song that says, give me oil in my lamp. Let it keep me burning. Give me oil in ministry. Let me keep moving. Give me oil upon my gift. Give me oil upon my business. Give me oil upon my family. I am a mother of five children. Give me oil, the grace to keep pushing. Give me oil, let me keep praying. Give me oil, let me keep fasting. Give me oil, let me keep studying. Convenient or not. Takes more than desire. Encounters provide a platform for empowerment. Listen, I'm wrapping up. Solomon was a man who was now appointed as a young man to be king over God's people. He was bankrupt of wisdom and understanding. But the Bible tells us that after he burned several offerings, in the night he had a dream, the vision of a night, and he had an encounter with the God of the Bible. And he said, Solomon, you have called my attention through your sacrifice. What should I do for you? And he said, I am a young man, and you have given me this responsibility over your people. I am ignorant, I am limited in knowledge. He said, grant unto your, host, your servant, an understanding heart and God was so pleased the Bible says and he said because you have not asked for material things nor the life of your enemies he says I will grant unto you an understanding heart but alongside I will give you riches wealth and honor like never before grant you the capacity to discern judgment Solomon wakes up from that sleep and you will think it was sleep like never before. That means when men sleep, your sleep is supposed to be a platform for impartation, not fear. You don't lie down and wake up more tired than you were before you lay down because all kinds of wicked spirits were looking for you. No. If a man can receive an impartation in sleep, if Jesus himself slept, that means sleep can refresh. He giveth his beloved sleep that I should sleep and wake up more anointed than I was when I slept because in that sleep it will be encounters of the spirit revelations and mysteries being made known unto me that when I wake up I have the plan for the next 10 years for the ministry for the company can I tell you the truth I don't know if this experience has happened to you 
there are times you step into the, the presence of God to pray and when the blueprint of your destiny is about to be revealed you fall asleep immediately this is not sleep of carelessness this is Adam's kind of sleep so that something will come out of you that's why religion is dangerous you go to a place of prayer and sleep begins there is sleep of laziness it's called slumber there is sleep where God is putting you down because something a vision needs to come out of you yes sir for reasons you cannot explain you lie down and in a moment you are gone and you wake up then the secret was revealed unto Daniel Daniel said oh king you are about to kill all of us no allow me go and sleep something happens when men sleep and the Bible says when he went he said just allow me give me one night to sleep by tomorrow I'll wake up with your answer and when Daniel went he said oh God you who gave sleep as a mystery for impartation let me lie down is sleep is not only for your physical health it affects your spirit man are we together I lay me down and I slept he said I waked not because it was morning he said the Lord sustained me that means he came to me in my sleep and did something to me reprogrammed me like surgery while I went to bed are we together now when you're about to perform a, a, a surgical a major surgery on a patient what do they do to the patients they give them anesthesia and then sometimes they sleep or at least they are not they are not as active as they should be within that place and then they numb everything they should numb around them and they begin to work the patient wakes up sometimes and they are done things have been removed things have been put in I don't know it's like I'm prophesying to someone that tonight like never before that this week is about to start your sleep will be all way prophetic all way prophetic all way prophetic I say it to you from the depth of my heart all way prophetic direction supernatural direction in the name of Jesus impartations of the spirit upon you that as soon as your eyes close they are open in the spirit and God begins to tell you this is how business will be in the next 10 years this is how ministry will be in the next five years receive it in the name of Jesus we're about to pray our time is gone let me give you the last what is the last result and the final result when a man contends for encounters number three your exploits write this and we'll pray your exploits will cause men to glorify Jesus and believe in him your exploits this is a very important part of our press for encounters your exploits in every area of life the manifestations of the glory and the power of God in your life will cause men to glorify Jesus and to believe in him John chapter 20 chapter 20 30 and 31 and we'll wrap up John 20 30 and 31 and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book let's read 31 together ready one to read but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that believing ye might have life through his name Daniel 6 25 to 27 what is the third result of encounters praise comes from your life praise comes from your destiny then King Darius this was Darius with Daniel in the lion's den after Daniel came out unhurt because the angel of the Lord came to protect him Darius was so impacted by that encounter he wrote to all people watch this nations languages that dwell in all the earth peace be multiplied unto you I make a decree Darius is saying that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel for he is the living God 
and steadfast forever and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even unto the end verse 27 he delivereth and rescueth how did he know that through a man's exploits and he walketh signs and wonders in heaven and in the earth who had delivered daniel from the power of the lions i'm praying for someone here what god will begin to do in your life from this night and all through this week People who have not given their life to Christ for years, your family members that have vowed not to serve your God, by reason of what my God will begin to do in your life, you will draw many to Jesus. You will draw many to Jesus. Many will sing new songs because of your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Keep standing. We're about to pray. Men can press for encounters experiences of the God kind by the word and through supernatural visionary encounters leading to the abundance of the impartation of the spirit of faith supernatural empowerment for exploits in our world today and finally granting your life access to reveal the glory of God that men can come to the saving knowledge of Jesus through the excellency, the wonder-working power, the effulgence of the life of God through you. Are you ready to pray? I'd like you to pray these three things in your life. Number one, you are praying from the depth of your heart, a baptism of the spirit of faith. Number two, supernatural empowerment for kingdom exploits. Number three, Lord, through my life, be glorified. Someone open your mouth and pray. Pray for the next one minute. Pray for the next one minute. You have heard the word of the Lord. You are in ministry. Pray. Businessman, pray. Politician, pray. Father, pray. Mother, pray. Young man and woman, pray. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. From my life, be glorified. From my life, glorified. Through Koinonia Global be glorified that we remain an ever increasing testament of your power your wisdom and your grace hallelujah many of you have come tonight and you have been part of this spiritual family because of the wonder working power of God and the testimonies that you have heard the Lord has used these testimonies to herald his name across the nations bringing many to Jesus can I tell you the truth publicity is easy in the presence of results you will have to talk too much and manipulate and beg and cry whether in business or ministry in the absence of genuine result results have a voice you can increase the volume it can speak so loud that the nations hear from any point there is no hospital that is too far for sick people. No. Mm -mm. When patients complain about a hospital, it is either ill-equipped or they are not sick enough. No hospital is too far for a genuine patient. Get state-of-the-art equipment and put there. Even if it is in a village that aircraft cannot go, people would rather go that far than to have their patients die. When you become like that hospital, Gentiles will come to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising. Are we together? Let me make the altar call. Jesus is the subject of our discussion. His glory and his grace is the reason why we teach and do what we do. At the end of our lives, it's not all about miracles and signs and wonders, but pointing men to Jesus and revealing him through our lives. The two men at Emmaus, their point of deliverance and their point of lifting came when they acknowledged and they honored Jesus. I'm going to make an altar call right now, two in one. There is somebody for sure, you are in this place and you are saying, I came to church tonight, apostle, and while I heard you speak, the Holy Spirit is beckoning on me to make my ways right. It is such a beautiful thing to win that war and with humility of heart surrender to the Lordship of Jesus. And then I'm also praying for those who are saying, apostle, I, I have 
made this commitment and this decision before but right now like never before i really want to rededicate my life to jesus i'm going to make a call one to five all the overflows outside our zaria family global family wherever you are those who are within these premises please you make your way to the front as i count one to five boldly without fear you are coming to the throne of grace i begin my counting now one come come god bless you God bless you. Are you celebrating them as they come to Jesus? Though we are few, you're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. Come to Jesus. Holy about it or you are running to Jesus come two more counts and I begin to pray shame the devil over your life tonight come young and old rich poor white black everything in between come come to Jesus apostle you don't know how my life has been you are still welcome the Holy Spirit is a master of breathing over darkness and chaos. He's able to bring light. Come. Come. Who knows whether it's a preacher that is on his way coming. Maybe you're a potential man of God. Maybe it is Esther on her way coming. Deborah on her way coming. Elijah on his way coming. Come. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for making this noble decision. You do not, you cannot, exp, exp, um, you know, I cannot begin to explain the joy in my heart every time I call people. Now, you see, most people do this just out of religion, just to show like you are serious with God. But believe me, when you have a revelation of that which Christ has done, and you know the power it takes to serve people the life of God, everything changes. These guys you see, a translation is happening this moment from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. It's a spiritual reality and I thank you all for your courage, young and old. Thank you so much for defying any sense of embarrassment to come to Jesus. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Let me request that you lift your hands, please, as a sign of surrender, high above your head. This is to Jesus, not to Joshua Selman, not to Koinonia, not to social media. This is to Jesus, the lover of your soul. And those in Zaria making that decision those across the globe all the viewing centers and all every expression every home wherever it is i want you to make this decision lift your right hand there in your home your office you're watching by way of rebroadcast it is never too late to make it right with jesus say after me lord jesus one more time say lord jesus tonight i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for my sin i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power say it of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god amen let me pray for you father thank you for these precious ones they have come declaring their need for you and thank you because you declared in your word that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away by the authority of scripture i declare their sins forgiven and i call you this day and this moment bona fide recipients of the life of god i call you the righteousness of god in christ jesus empowered to walk in victory from tonight you go from glory to glory and grace to grace i plant a new i call upon my god the god of my covenant i push you to a new season in the name of jesus in anointings anointings that even the fathers we wonder 
From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, no sickness or disease shall find its way through your body. Our ancestors found God in the mountains of prayer. They did not learn from conferences and seminars. 